Hello everyone. Now we will talk about two topics on externalities and public good. This is basically for the students with an economics background to give them a brief revision of these concepts and to introduce the students who may not have the background in economics and are doing this particular course. So externalities when we talk about before we talk about externalities, let us look at what do you mean by a market. In economics, we talk about a market as a place where the transactions happen between the buyers and the sellers. When buyers and sellers come together, essentially bringing together the forces of demand and supply also leads to determination of the market price. However, there are possibilities and situations whereby you will find that that an action which is now taken by a producer or, or, or by a consumer, it may not reflect in the market prices, though it will be influencing the other consumer or a producer. So I'll just uh, you know, simplify this for you with an example. So what we are talking about is basically an action. This action can be taken either by a producer or a consumer. Second, it influences other producer or a consumer. And what is the main feature? The feature is that such interaction or impact is not accounted for, is not accounted or in the market price. So let us understand these three things using an example. Say for instance there is a, a tannery. Now this tannery is located on the side of a river and it throws all its effluent in the river. Downstream that river there is a Suppose it is throwing its effluent in the river and downstream there are some fishermen who now depend upon their catch on a daily basis from that river to make their living. Because of the effluent which comes from the tannery now, the catch is affected, the fish are dying because of the chemicals engaged in that. As a result, what is happening? There is a producer who has taken a certain action and that action is now affecting the other producer who are now a fisherman and then they are you know getting a catch from the river and selling them in the market and this kind of an action is now no longer being able to capture through the market price so effectively what is happening the producer in that tannery is using the natural resource which is in terms of availability of the water and throwing their effluent and affecting the livelihood of the fishermen who are now located downstream. So this kind of a situation is effective is what we call as externality and here what we have seen is an example of a negative externality. Why we are calling it a negative externality? Because it influences the other producer in a negative manner. On the other hand there could be a situation of a positive externality. So once again, before I go into the, what do you mean, what is an example of a positive externality, let us just revisit the definition. Essentially, an action taken by a producer and consumer affecting the other producer or a consumer, but not accounted for in the market price. We have seen a case of a negative and let us see an example of a positive externality. Suppose outside of your house, you put up a you know huge, uh, maybe a bulb, a bulb with a high, uh, you know, voltage which is able to now light up the quite a lot of area around it and what you find that in the evening maybe you know somebody who does not have an access to electricity are sitting there and then they are able to read in that particular light when you put up that electric bulb there you were not thinking of this kind of an impact on somebody else but it has a positive impact the other case kind of a case can be 
where suppose somebody undertakes a, a major repair outside their house and as a result the neighborhood lights up it becomes bright it becomes beautiful however while doing that kind of a repair or maybe you know introducing a garden in your you know in front of your house you were not thinking of the positive impact it may have on all the neighbors around so once again a situations of a, a positive externality so as i said there can be two case, uh, externality can be positive or negative and i have given you the examples for the same now what happens what how does this in externality influences the market transaction you have seen it very clearly here that when the effluent was coming from the tannery the fishermen are now getting negatively impacted but there is no way for them to you know go back to the tannery owner and then you know kind of you know, argue with them because that person can always say that that you know they we are throwing it in the river and it is not our problem so what what is the impact of this a uh, kind of a you know, negative externality and a positive externality and how interventions are required in order to deal with it is what we are going to learn today so what case of mod, in, a, in case of a negative externality we have seen that that there is a cost right there is a cost of production this cost of production now belongs to the producer right the tannery owner and it has certain you know cost engaged in it including total cost which is which is a combination of your fixed and a variable cost etc but there is also a certain cost now which is imposed on the society right and this is what we will call as a marginal external cost so that that will be talked about in terms of the external cost so what is external cost essentially uh, you know a cost which is imposed externally not on the firm itself but to a to an outsider by the firm when it increases its output we will also put a word in front of it marginal in case of a marginal we in economics we you know use this term very frequently and is essentially it uh, you know in this context we'll talk about increase in the cost of the let us say uh, uh, you know of this particular production because of one more unit increase in the output as such so now the producer if it increases its output by one more unit then what is the increase in the external cost which is imposed please note that there is also going to be an impact on the private cost that is again is the marginal cost of production which we are already well aware of right so which might include your variable pro, you know factors of production and the cost imposed because of the use of that kind of a factor of production here we are talking about the marginal external cost whereby if the in output of the tannery producer increased by one more unit then how much of an external cost is imposed because of that so then what we have is then what we have is a marginal cost of production which is the cost of production for the producer and then we have the marginal external cost which is now imposed to the a party which is external to the production for the particular producer now when we put them together that is the sum of the marginal cost of production that is for the producer and marginal external cost will give us what we call as a marginal social cost but i hope the intuition behind this is very clear so you have a cost of production which is now internal to the firm and they will definitely take into consideration the cost while making a decision with respect to the output that to be produced that will maximize their profit however they will not take into consideration the external cost which is now being imposed from the point of view of a society and a social planner we have to bring these two together and understand what is the marginal social cost and its impact on the market so now in order to understand the impact on the market let us look at a very simple case of a situation whereby a perfect competition situation where the uh, the firm is taking the price as a, a given right 
and it has its own marginal cost as for the profit maximizing decision making we will be the firm will be deciding to, to produce where their price is equal to the marginal cost so what is the price price will add to the benefit of a producer when they will send one more unit of the output and marginal cost is the cost imposed on a firm when they increase the output by one more unit so intuitively also it makes uh, you know um, sense that the firm will be deciding the output to be produced whereby price is equal to your marginal cost based on that what you will see that the firm individual will be deciding to produce at a let us say q not now what we have said that in case of an externality there is going to be an uh, external cost imposed and once again if you are looking at a tannery the external cost which is now going to be imposed it increases with the output so on the x axis we have output and on the y axis we have the price and the marginal cost right so now as the output increases what we will find is that output keeps on as the output increases your marginal external cost also increases now when we put together this marginal external cost with the marginal cost of the firm what we will get we will get the marginal social cost which is now being shown through this dotted line now if we look at this marginal social cost and then equate it to the price you will find that the profit maximizing output should be q1 and not q0 so what is happening in the market in this case of a situation when you have a presence of a negative externality the marginal social cost is higher than the marginal cost of production which is a private uh, product cost of production for that particular individual firm why it is higher because it is imposing an external cost in the on the society when you put them together what you find the market is essentially over or the firm is essentially now over producing that means the output which is being determined by the firm is profit maximizing for them is actually over and above the output which could be which should be produced as per the you know when we take into consideration the cost imposed on the society society so what you have is an over production the output which is produced is much higher than the output which would be socially optimal when you take into consideration the external cost being imposed as such so then clearly we have a situation and uh, since the market uh, you know the is not being if you now working efficiently what you may need is a situation of a, or a intervention from the government as such but we will talk about it later now this we have done as a case from an individual firm point of view you can extend it to the industry as such in the industry what will happen now is with the assumption that with the same with the assumption that all the firms have the same cost structure what you will find is suppose this is a demand curve in the particular uh, you know market of the heights let us say and then you are now putting together the the supply curve which is the sum of the marginal cost of the all the firms to get this from the point and it will be equal to some of the marginal cost for all the firms which are there in the industry based on that what you will find once again the price is now being determined at p not and the output is now being determined at a q not when we are using this capital q essentially we are highlighting the industry output when we take into consideration once again the marginal external cost being imposed by all the tanneries which are now throwing their effluents in the river and put it put it together with your the marginal uh, private cost then what we will have is once again a curve which will be marginal social cost again a supply curve which takes into consideration the external cost imposed by the throwing of the effluent in the river if you go by that what you will have is the price should be essentially p1 in the market and output should be essentially q1 in the market 
so what you have seen is in a market situation whereby when you do not take into consideration the marginal external cost being imposed the price is rather lower output is more however once you introduce these things and you will find that the price should be higher in the market and output should be lower then what we find is that if that is not being done and the producers are not taking into consideration the external cost imposed then what then what is happening the p not would be the price and q not would be the output produced now if you look at the social cost which is being imposed then if i go up till here this entire area will be reflecting what this higher area this entire area of this particular triangle will be reflecting the social cost which is being imposed by the throwing of the effluent in the river which is not being now taken care of so this would be this entire red area would be the social cost of the negative externality related to the throwing of the effluent which we have talked about So next what we can talk so we have taken an example of a negative externality for our course what is more important and what is more relevant is the situation of a positive externality now think from a point of view of a firm which is now maybe engaged in a basic research and development firms may not be engaged in basic they might be engaged in more uh, applied version of uh, research and development that might have a straight forward impact on the introduction of the new product so let us see as let us say take a case of a pharmaceutical firm which is now thinking of coming up with a drug for a new disease which has not been uh, there as of now once they come up with this particular solution of or maybe a molecule which can help them in designing that particular drug and the drug is out there in the market let us say um, other firms will be able to learn from it they can always re reverse engineer it and understand what the particular work has been done by the form in order to deal with a specific disease and introduce this particular drug so the firm will be able to maybe you know uh, mass produce that particular uh, drug and will be able to sell in the market so clearly they will be able to make the private benefits out of that there are now mechanisms also available like patents etc but we will talk about it later let us first think from a situation where such suppose not nothing of that sort is available and now the firm will not be able to you know kind of a recover the external benefits which it has caused for the other firm so what is happening here is a some kind of a spill over of the information which is happening with respect to the other rivals that are in the pharmaceutical industry because of the introduction of this new drug the other firms can also learn from it so there is a private benefit which accrue to this particular firm but apart from that there is an external benefit that also happens say for example we have seen the case of a putting up a bulb which has a high voltage and then is essentially lighting up lot of area around your house and somebody comes and sits and does his or her homework there in the evening in the same way uh, we also talked about the repair maybe putting up a garden outside your house which is now again brightening up and making the neighborhood look much more better so in the same way if we talk about the research and development which might be conducted at a firm level there might be external benefit and which are different from the private benefit for the individual firm we can take it little bit much for further and uh, the basic research which will be conducted may be in the academic institutions universities etc and maybe the you know government sponsored or publicly funded research laboratories will have a lot more in that sense uh, external uh, benefit so what we are now talking about in the last uh, section when we talk about the negative externality we talked about the marginal external cost now we will talk about marginal external benefit so let me uh, put it here marginal external benefit what is that this is essentially an increase in the benefit which happens or accrues to the other firm okay or the other parties as this particular firm increases its output by one unit so increased benefit increased benefit that accrues to other party okay hmm. 
when in another form increases its output by one unit then like we did earlier so we will put together this external benefit with the marginal private benefit so there will be a marginal private benefit which would be increased in the benefit of that individual firm itself when they will increase its output by one unit right so there will be marginal private benefit plus the marginal external benefit once we put them together what we will have is a marginal social benefit okay sum of marginal private benefit and the marginal external benefit will give us the marginal social benefit now let us first look at the problem intuitively and understand where the issue will come into now when a firm is taking into consideration the benefit that will accrue to itself that is a marginal private benefit the decision making would is now going to be different from when a social planner will in fact think about the external then benefit that will accrue like in the last case we have seen what was happening because of the social cost being higher than the marginal private cost the output which is now optimal which is which should be produced in the society is rather lower as compared to what is being produced so in a similar way you will find that the differences will emerge in case of a positive externality also so now if we talk about once again is a suppose uh, a case of an individual firm right so it has certain benefits it which will enjoy or let us say let us say, uh, seek one example in which a firm has now to make a decision of how much financial capital to invest in the r&d project okay so in order to decide that that is the financial capital to be invested okay on what basis the firm will decide clearly they will have to see the the net present value of the profit which will accrue to them over a period of a time and the rate of interest will become an important decision variable so now based on that let us say they have to make a decision of the quantity of financial capital on the left on the x axis and on the y we have the rate of return now as this will be going down what you will have is a curve like this so what is this curve telling us this is if the this particular curve will give us the the demand for the capital for an for the firm itself with respect to the rate of interest as the rate of interest will go down the willingness of the firm to invest in the r&d project is now rather increasing so suppose that there are different uh, rate of uh, return which are available let me uh, call it maybe 12% 10 8 or 6 and uh, 4 and the the going rate is let us say is somewhere around 7% so based on that the firm will decide that it should invest q not amount of financial capital in their research and development projects what we have talked about is effectively the private benefit and then equating it with the interest rate and finalizing the amount of capital to be invested but we have already seen that there is going to be a positive externality associated with this kind of an investment and leading to a marginal external benefit right so then if once we introduce this external benefit to it essentially you should have this curve being shifted towards the outward one and that would be your uh, from the basis of the society's point of view right so the willingness of the society they in fact they think that the amount should be invested into because of the positive externalities associated with that for the same rate of return you will find that that this amount is now going to be much higher now so 
So just just to simp put it simply, what is happening? Because there are positive benefits associated with the investment in the research and development by the firm. The social benefits are higher. The society or the social planner would in fact intend that that the amount which is now invested, the financial capital invested into the R&D project should be much higher vis-a-vis -vis the actual amount that might be invested. Now, what is why is this happening? This is happening because why the amount expected uh, invested is rather lower is because the firms are now not able to kind of, uh, you know, account for or kind of were able to appropriate the investment they are making into the research and development completely. There are certain spillovers which are beyond them and they are not able to, uh, you know, make returns from that particular investment completely. So, as a result, what will happen? The investment which will be made in the society or by the firm in the research and development is going to be much lower. So, moving on, we have understood the problem. We have understood the problem associated with the negative externality as well as with the positive externality. In case of a negative externality, we have seen there is a going to be a situation of an overproduction and in case of a, a positive, we have seen a case of an underproduction. And this is a case which is more relevant uh, for our course. Now, uh, having understood that there is a market failure associated as and when there is an external presence of an externality, what is to be expected? Now, we have seen that in case of a market, we say that the demand, the forces of demand and supply which will come together and determine the market price, the efficient price will be determined. However, considering this kind of a situation, since there is a market failure, we would require, we would expect or we would, uh, you know, rather have some kind of an uh, interventions devised. Those interventions we have already seen is, for instance, in case of a negative externality can be associated with maybe having an emission fee, putting up the emission standards and other such, uh, you know, interventions by the government. So, we have already seen that there are uh, situations where there are um, actions which by you can say that by the government they will either put up an emission fee or set up the emission standard beyond which firms cannot do that or they would impose certain other kind of a restrictions on the firm in order to ensure that the negative externality is now rather taken care of. So, it, they try to account for it in the market price by increasing the uh, cost from the point of view of the firms as such. But as I said earlier, for us, what is important is the case of the positive externality. What we have understood is the knowledge of spillovers and then what kind of an intervention can be defined. So, one intervention which we have seen is that of the subsidization. So, here what we see is the subsidizing of research and development. First of all, we have also seen that in case of a basic research, a lot more investment comes through the public fund. That is one way to do it. So, the government invests in the research, basic kind of research and development in order to incentivize the companies to invest more in research and uh, development, subsidization also happens. They can be given some kind of a tax credits whereby if they invest in research and development, then the tax credits can be given to them. Apart from that, like we said earlier, is the case of the intellectual property rights. So, intellectual property rights, uh, specifically in case of uh, uh, technology uh, driven products are uh, the, the important role is being played by the patents. So, how pat the intellectual property rights will help? They will essentially help the firms in earning more and more returns from their R&D. These IPRs will help them in putting a boundary and, and defining their property rights appropriately with respect to their invention and as a result, even if the other firms would want to use it, they can use a market mechanism like licensing etc in order to uh, appropriate their own intellectual property. So, what we will find that in this case, uh, uh, when we are talking about innovation, invention, it is much easier to define the property rights. IPRs can be provided and are being provided by uh, by the countries 
which helps the firm in designing and defining the property right over their particular invention and hence help them in appropriating the returns from the investment that they have made in research and development in this course we will have a longer discussion on the intellectual property right as an institution which is created to incentivize research and development however when we talk about the basic research then in this cases it would be rather uh, you know difficult as for example discoveries cannot be patented and uh, so on and so forth and there you will find that the government subsidies will play a very important role so what we have understood is that because of the presence of the positive externality with respect to research and development there are interventions devised by the government in order to support these kind of an activities by the firm now what we will look at uh, a, another um, important um, concept in this case that is of the public good public good again you can see the kind of a good which will have a positive externality but if you uh, kind of uh, define them let us let us first define them and then understand this particular uh, idea so public good essentially are non exclusive and non rival goods what do we mean by this non rivalry is rather easy to conceptualize here the idea is suppose an individual now consumes a particular product that will affect the consumption of the other person in the sense that the other person will no longer be able to consume it say for example if you have an apple and you're sitting in your class and then you know you you consume that apple clearly your friend cannot have it so the consumption by an individual will influences or reduces the consumption or the ability of the other to use it so that product becomes rivalrous in consumption whereas there are goods which are non rivalrous in consumption that means if an individual consumes it it will not affect the ability of the others to do that for example the country will provide for national defense then all the individuals in a particular country will be able to avail the national defense right it's not like that uh, some enemies can come and attack a particular group in that case then uh, so apart from the uh, so but when we talk about the public goods what we find they are non rivalrous in consumption that means that uh, good for which the mar now now talking technically here what will happen but once you have made a provision for let us say something like national defense the marginal cost of making the provision for that particular product for an additional consumer is going to be zero right so then what we are talking about is a non rival good clearly here you see that that the knowledge for example the class for example we were seeing that if you eat an apple clearly your friend cannot uh, have that however if you are hearing the lecture the and and the teacher is giving the lecture in that particular class just because you are understanding it it doesn't reduces the ability of the other person to understand it so then this is a very specific uh, context in the classroom i'm just trying to explain it but uh, very specific cases of uh, you know goods which are non rivals in consumption like i said earlier is that of a national defense and clearly knowledge also just because one person consumes it does it doesn't reduce the ability of the other to consume it as such another product uh, another characteristics of the public good is that of the non exclusive that means it is very difficult or in fact impossible to uh, you know prevent other people from using it now suppose the road has a uh, road has been built or there is a public park anyone can walk into the park and uh, they will if one person it is very difficult to exclude uh, other people from using it so non uh, exclusive and non rival goods essentially are the two important characteristics which we look at while defining the public good uh, what is the implication of these two characteristics is basically that that the marginal cost of making provision for an additional consumer of that particular product is now going to be zero at marginal cost of provision to an additional consumer 
is 0 right and it people cannot be excluded from consuming it so when you bring together these two concepts what you have is a public good but in, if you look around ourselves, definitely there are certain combinations. For instance, we gave you an example of that. I give you an example of that uh, public park, right? Now what we find that there might be a ticket imposed on it. A certain amount of uh, excludability is now being imposed. Roads, right? If it is a public road, anybody can walk onto it. But however, now what we have is a toll versus a toll and a, a non-toll road as such. So if you put excludability on certain, in this particular case, and put rivalrous in consumption if a product is rivalrous in consumption and also excludable then definitely what we are talking about is a private good we have seen an example of that right? most items of consumption in that case now on the other hand if they are rivalrous in consumption but it is not possible to exclude then what we are talking about is the common resources if for instance there is a pond right so fish in a pond it might be rivalrous in consumption for all the fishermen but it is very not possible to exclude everybody from going and fishing if they are in this particular vicinity they would want to go and catch the fish on the other hand if the good is non is not a rivalrous in consumption but there is a possibility to exclude then what you have is a case of the club good the last one is where it is not possible to, uh, which is non-rival and non-excludable, then clearly you have a case of a public good, right? Like we gave an example of a national defense and to, an, uh, to a larger extent that of a basic research also. Now, what is once again important for us to understand is that, you know, this public good, the way we are talking about is they have a positive externality. However, please note all the goods which have a positive or a negative externality will not be public good. And once again here, what will happen? Uh, the, the idea here is that again, that of a free riders problem, whereby what will uh, the, uh, uh, you know, outcome of a particular nature or the characteristics of the good would be that the consumer or the producer essentially uh, will not pay for the non-exclusive good within the expectation that the others will do that, right? So, maybe expecting that somebody else will do this kind of a research and we will be able to, uh, you know, uh, benefit from that kind of a case. So, in, the, in another cases, we see that public good, essentially what will happen, the marginal cost of the provision uh, to an additional consumer is now going to be zero. So, clearly, the, the motivation which the companies will have in order to invest in the research and development is going to be rather limited. Given these specific characteristics and the market failure associated with the externality and the public good, what we will find? We will find that there is a need for an intervention from the government perspective in order to incentivize, in order to ensure that the research and development uh, investments actually happen by the firms. So, we will close this particular section here and uh, thank you so much.